He is the most intelligent janitor in the world. His name is Tom Labrick. When he was in school, he proposed a plan and solved the Mexican oil spill problem. The eight largest oil companies worldwide compete in hiring him before he even graduates. Some made him an executive, some gave him company stock, and even one company directly offered an annual salary of $400,000. Tom rejected all of these offers, though. Despite all the fantastic opportunities presented to him, Tom decides to go to Spain for a job offered by Walter Moreland. The job involves Tom using his brilliant brain to crack a vault that has an item that Walter is after. This vault is one of a kind and is considered an engineering miracle. For more than 80 years, no man has ever broken in it. Walter meets up with Tom, introducing him to the team. Walter Moreland is the owner of a salvage firm. A few months ago, he salvaged several antiques on a sunken ship inside Spanish waters. An item in that wreckage contained three coins that provided a valuable treasure's coordinates. Unfortunately, that salvage mission failed, and the Spanish authorities confiscated everything they found. Now, all of these items are locked inside the miraculous vault in the Spanish bank. The next member is Lorraine, who is an adopted daughter of Walter. Lorraine's part in the team is impersonation. She can pretend to be anyone the team needs for their infiltration missions. The third member is a hacker named Klaus, who is in charge of the team's hacking needs. The fourth member is James, Walter's right-hand man. Being an ex-soldier, he has the best combat power in the team. The fifth and last member is Simon, who is in charge of the team's logistics and equipment procurement. As long as there is money, he can get anything the team needs. On the day Tom arrived, the team was having problems hacking into the bank's system. They need a code to enter the system, but it will take time, and they don't have it. Tom suggested a simple solution for the problem. He told them to call one of the bank's clients and pretend to be an automated voicemail recording. That move will let them extract the codes they need from that client. After trying it out, the team quickly acquired the code they needed. During his second day with the team, Tom was officially studying the inner workings of the Bank of Spain. The bank is considered the most fortified building on earth. It is covered by numerous sensors and cameras. It also has guards trained to react immediately to any commotion that happens. The biggest problem that the team needs to deal with is just across the road. The headquarters of the Spanish army is situated across the road from the bank. When the bank alarms are triggered, 500 soldiers will come rushing in to deal with the problem. On top of all that, the bank's security chief is actually the former commander-in-chief of Spain's counterterrorism force. Tom and Walter's team are basically facing a force capable of effectively handling any attacks on the bank. The team has little information about the vault inside the bank. To learn more about the internal structure of the vault, they currently need to perform a scan for its layout. At the moment, they only know that they will need two keys for the vault and the fingerprint of the bank's chief of security. The team launches an operation to get the items and information they need. Tom and Simon enter the bank by pretending to be janitors. Lorraine, on the other hand, pretends to be an insurance agent for famous paintings. Inside the rooms where these paintings are kept are safes that contain the keys they need for the vault. She met the chief of security on her way to these paintings and asked him to hold her cup of coffee so she could shake the hand of the bank's director. This allowed her to get the chief of security's fingerprint, which they needed for the vault as well. In the room of the first painting, Klaus helps Lorraine deal with the bank's camera surveillance. They recorded a video of Lorraine scanning the paintings and looped it at 10% speed to show nothing was wrong inside that room. Lorraine finds the safe, readies her equipment, and begins copying the key. After copying the key, an unexpected guest arrives, causing problems for her. Lorraine now has 20 seconds before the surveillance hack they performed stops. She needs to be in the proper position for the video, but the bank director is in the way. She needs him to be out of the video's frame. She decides to ask the director for a picture of her scanning the painting. She asked him to step back when taking the picture. At the last second, she prevented the director from appearing before the surveillance video hack ended. Lorraine then sets out to find the second key, but Tom runs into a problem during this time. His job was to scan the structure of the vault. To do this, 
he pretended to be a cleaner and went to the lower floors of the bank. The vault was assumed to be directly below one of the meeting rooms on that floor. Tom crawled below the table inside at meeting room and turned the magnetometer on to start scanning. Suddenly, a group of people entered the room to have a meeting, and now Tom is trapped under that table. If that wasn't enough, the device started to malfunction, and now the scan is stuck at 96%. After tweaking the device, it started working again, and the scan was completed. Unfortunately, this triggered an alarm. Under the command of the bank's chief of security, the entire bank was locked down, and the army troops came rushing in. Meanwhile, Lorraine had just finished copying the second key when the director came to get her. Due to the rush, she failed to return the stolen key and closed the safe where it was held. The team eventually decides to have Lorraine throw the key to Tom and put it back. After getting the key, Tom rushed to the third floor, returned the key, and closed the safe. Just as the safe closes, Tom is warned that a guard is coming to his location quickly. He thought of a brilliant idea to escape getting caught. When the guard arrived at the room, she saw Tom cleaning and asked what he was doing there. He took off his earphones and pretended he didn't hear the alarm because of it. Tom escaped getting caught because of his quick thinking and that gutsy move. After the operation ended, Tom now begins to analyze the internal structure of the vault. He finds a part that the scan can't clearly display. He then realized that the blurry part was water. The vault was designed based on the principle of a weighing scale. When the vault is opened, any weight change will cause it to close and will be flooded with water. Now, the team knows how the vault's mechanism worked and faces the problem of keeping the weight balance constant. Tom starts figuring out how to solve this problem, working around the clock. Meanwhile, Simon and James make a major discovery regarding the area under the bank. Turns out Tom was right, there was a giant scale below the bank, and the current balance was zero. It was then that they found out a big problem that would end their current plans. The walls of that underground room were outrageously sturdy. They were made of titanium steel, reinforced concrete with a DSM outer layer. Basically, it will take them 15 days to breach the wall, even if they use the hardest drill bit for it. This is time that they can't afford to give because they have a limited time window for this heist. As it stands, the entire operation is impossible to pull off, and the team has to consider giving up. Walter took some time to think about things and went to watch the soccer fans in the square. During that time, he realized that when the finals of the World Cup were held, all the cameras near the bank would face the fans on the square. That means they don't have to enter the bank from the underground passage and could simply enter it from the roof instead. He quickly tells everyone of this, making changes to the plans. Everyone was filled with hope once again. Now, everything depends on Tom and his ability to figure out how to deal with the vault's mechanisms. After taking a quick break with Lorraine in a bar nearby, Tom finally figures out how to deal with the vault security mechanism. He demonstrates his solution by placing a cup of water on a scale, showing the balance move. He then removes the cup, sprays liquid nitrogen on the scale, and replaces the cup. This time, the balance didn't move because the scale was frozen. He says the same principle can be applied to the giant scale of the vault. The only catch is that they will need a lot of liquid nitrogen to pull this off. With a solid plan, the entire team begins their operation and the soccer game between Spain and Netherlands begins. The team only has 105 minutes for the whole operation. They start by ziplining to the roof of the bank, cutting a glass window open, and entering the bank through that opening. Then, they navigate through 100 meters of piping until they arrive at the room entrance containing the vault. There, they will need to cross using a portable ladder. They are now in front of the vault, and Klaus begins his hacking work for the team to enter. They use the two keys and fingerprint that they acquired earlier and now find themselves in front of the impressive vault. It was now Simon's time to work. He starts spraying liquid nitrogen on the scale to start the freezing process. 
After using up all of the liquid nitrogen tanks he prepared, the reaction happens, and the vault's floor starts to freeze. The vault team then entered and started looking for the item that contained the coins they wanted. During this time, the bank patrol team discovered the opened roof window and rushed to the vault. Lorraine found the coins, but they did not expect what would happen next. It turns out James had plans of betraying the team from the start. He was an undercover agent and now plans to steal the coins from the team. Lorraine was forced to give James the coins. At this time, the freezing effect of the liquid nitrogen faded, and the vault security mechanisms were triggered. Now, Tom, Lorraine, and James were trapped inside, and water came rushing into the vault. Being an ex-soldier, James has the skills to swim out of the trap, and so he runs away with the coins. The lives of Tom and Lorraine are now in serious danger, and the rest of the team can't do anything for them. On the verge of drowning, Tom thought of a solution, which was for Simon to add more weight to the scale. The plan was to trick the vault system into thinking that it was full and start the draining process. Simon rushed to place all the nitrogen tanks on the scale. Once all of them were in place, it seemed that the weight was still not enough. Almost giving up, he saw his radio and decided to add it as well. That small radio was enough to make the balance shift, causing the water to stop pouring in and begin the draining process as well. The chief of security and his men now rushed towards the vault. When they opened it, nobody was inside. As it turns out, Tom and Lorraine used the drain pipes to escape the vault and make their way to the upper levels. The bank security force chased them, and they were running out of time. Lorraine then remembered the room she visited for scanning the paintings earlier. She recalled that the director usually leaves the window in that room open. Rushing to that room, Tom and Lorraine escaped the bank through the open window. They joined the crowd in the square, taking their jackets off and blending in with the crowd. Despite all that effort, the soldiers after them have almost caught up. Realizing this, Tom and Lorraine decide to share a kiss and accept their fate. However, fate had other plans for them, and at that moment, Spain won the game. This caused the crowd to go wild, preventing the soldiers from moving any further and allowing the two to escape. A few days later, James brings the coin back to his employer. They decipher the coordinates only to find out that it was the location of the Eiffel Tower. It was the wrong place, and they realized they were tricked by Walter's team. It turns out that Lorraine switched the coins in the vault, and James got the wrong ones. On Tom's side, they were relaxing in a resort in France and discovered the correct coordinates of the treasure they wanted. The team discovers that the treasure is hidden inside the Bank of England this time. The entire team is about to get busy once again. In general, people find bank heists an appealing theme for movies. The use of tools, techniques, and deception when performing these heists provide an exciting and intricate layer to the film. Now, if you were Tom, would you live a normal corporate life or risk it all for a once-in-a-lifetime chance to perform an impossible task? Let us know in the comments section. Thank you for watching. If you liked the video, please subscribe, drop a like, and click on that bell. See you again next time.